Good morning. I hope that you all are doing well this morning. It's so glad to, I'm so glad to be here and worship with you all. My name is Cameron Miller, and I'm the pastor here at Silver Lake United Methodist Church. Um, this morning, before our, our first announcement, we're gonna, I'm going to invite Kathy um, up. She is one of the members of our board, and so we had a meeting this week, and so she's going to give a little report of how that went and give you a little update. Good morning. So we had a full agenda for our board meeting this last week. Um, we started with a fabulous dinner that was cooked by Pastor Cameron. He made lasagna, garlic bread, and salad and dessert. And um, so we had a nice dinner before we started. And um, then we spent a lot of time going through um, a lot of things that are going on in the church. Um, the first being that we... Um, are starting with a new online giving portal. We've been using Square, and um, that was kind of something that we did just really quickly when COVID started, and we didn't really know any better, but that's really more for businesses. So we're signing up with Tithely, which is kind of geared towards churches, and so there will be more info to come on that, and we'll be changing over to that. We, re, um, we talked about the back to school bash and what a big success it was and that we think we had about 250 people come through and it was very successful and we're already making plans to do that again next year and continue to work with the community. We also talked about um, that based on that success, we're going to work with the police department and others in the community to host our trunk or treat and kind of expand that here at the church. And so more to come on that. Uh, we gave a recap of VBS. Um, we also have some new office help. Jenny Miller is helping out in the office, volunteering a few hours a week. Um, as regards to our hospitality teams and getting those back up and running, we're going to um, get together some expectations or a guide for those, um, just so like new people that are coming on board can know what's expected of a hospitality team and give them a little guidance on um, what all they should be thinking about. Um, Cam Pastor Cameron has come up with some connection cards that are in the pews and those are um, for like people that are visiting to fill in their information and share that they're here. Um, we also need to get updated birthdays and anniversaries uh, for people in the community. Uh, we're working on the newsletter. We're doing the one once a week online, and then we're working on getting a once a month one that will be mailed out to folks that don't have online access. Uh, we realize with the online worship, there has been some sound issues, and we're working to get those resolved. And we're also looking at updating some of the slides to have fewer words on them to make them a little easier to read. Um, on September 25th, Pastor Cameron will be commissioned here in church. He missed the official commissioning up in Nebraska um, due to COVID. And so um, we're going to have several people here from the conference that will commission him as part of our church service on September 25th. So please plan to be here for that. And so we can share in that joy of having him commissioned. Um, Pastor Cameron will be out of the office for a couple of days due to a residency retreat. So um, he'll be leaving this afternoon and then be back on late Tuesday. So the office will be closed on Monday and Tuesday with him out. Um, we are going to be updating the bulletin order and you'll notice that starting uh, next week, just changing things around a little bit uh, to make things a little more comfortable. Uh, I gave the financial report, and um, year to date, we have had income of $81,161 as of the end of July, and then we had spent $88,671. We have been trying very hard to keep our expenses in check based on the, you know, to try and keep it in relation to our givings. Uh, mission shares, we have paid as of the end of July $7,753 of our commitment of 15,896. So that is 48% um, 
of that year to date. And what we pay on that, we pay in 10% of all of our income received each month. And so right now we're at, you know, 48% of our income for the year that we've been able to pay towards mission shares. So hopefully that'll pick up in the second half of the year because our goal is always to make 100% of our mission shares. Uh, we talked about um, several things around the buildings that need to be addressed. We are going to be adding um, signs for a couple of additional handicap spaces. And then we, um, an, we have an ongoing discussion about church lighting. We'd like to update all of these lights to LED to save on energy costs, and then work on like the ones in the fellowship hall to get those updated as well. So that's an ongoing thing that we um, continue to talk about. And we need to get some of these bulbs out so we can figure out what kind of bulb they are so we know what to buy to replace them with. Um, the preschool has started, and it's going well. Um, they have been applying for some grants that will allow them some funds to do things for their preschool, one of which is going to be updating and adding some play equipment out here in the um, area out here. And um, so, you know, keep an eye out that there will be some uh, changes going on out there and other little things that they're going to be able to do with their grant money um, that will benefit us in the long run, which is really, really nice. Um, the transition team, we need to meet at least one more time, and we have one more small group, which is going to be at Becky Lindstrom's house on the 7th. Um, please sign up for that. That's our last one, and the others have gone really well. And just, you know, it's a really nice casual time to get to know more about Pastor Cameron and for him to get to know you guys. And um, our next board meeting is September 21st at, 6, at 6.30. And so we had a very good meeting. And then just real quick before we move on, I've got two other quick announcements. We are having a Harvest Home meeting today after church in the fellowship hall after snack time. And then this Thursday is Topeka North Outreach. We're starting back up for the year with our back snack program. And so Thursday at 6, we'll be meeting at Indian Creek Elementary, which is at 43rd and Indian Creek, from 6 to 7.30 to fill packs for the kids for meals for the weekend. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. Um, I'm going to go ahead and follow up on some of the things she said and make a couple more announcements, and then I'll open up the floor. So she mentioned um, the commissioning service that's going to take place on September 25th here. Um, some of the people who will be here will be the bishop will be here that day um, to commission me, and then we'll also have some other conference staff. I'm, I think our DS will be here, um, and then we're going to have a guest preacher that day who is um, a good friend and mentor of mine. He was my campus minister at Nebraska Wesleyan University, Eduardo Busson, so he'll be here preaching for us that day. So it's going to be a really exciting day and a, and a fun day in worship, so I really do invite invite you to, to come to this and be a, be a part of this, this worship service that usually happens at annual conference and all of the people getting commissioned and ordained are done at the same time, but because it didn't work out for me because I got sick, um, this is the way they're doing it. So I hope you'll, you'll come and be a part of, of that service. She also mentioned that the office will be closed the next couple days um, because I'll be out at a retreat um, for, for a ministry retreat. So if you need something, you can still reach me by my cell phone, which that number's in the bulletin or on my business card, or you can email myself or the church, and I can still get back to you. I should have the evenings fairly free if, if I need to respond to something. Then the last one of an update I have, so if you did notice on your way in the new lock this morning, um, it has new combinations. So if you had a combination and need one to get into the church, please contact me and we'll work at getting those set up to where you can get into the building still with that combination. And so it'll just have to change a little bit. Our old combos were four numbers and this, these have a minimum of six. So we just have to change those a little bit. So please contact me if you were someone that had um, a number and needs one and we'll, we'll talk about how to get that set up. A couple other things this morning. Um, if you haven't filled out the, your contact update sheet, there's some more left on the um, table right out in the middle of this, the sanctuary. This is just to help me so that I can f uh, contact people as I need to and be able to get a hold of people if something um, were to happen. And so 
I've noticed that the numbers were very out of date, so I really thank you to everyone who has, who has already filled one out. I've had a lot of people, but in case you haven't and have missed those days, there are some out there. Last thing I have is there are still some backpack tags left, so if you weren't here last week and or you didn't grab one or you lost one for your kids, your grandkids, um, whatever, there are some out on the Welcome Center, so feel free to grab one of those on your way out. Now I'd like to open the floor to any announcements that we may have. Jane's got one and then Mike. Good morning. And this is really not quite an announcement, I guess, but a, more of a thank you to what Kathy said during her announcements. They, you talked about decreasing the number of words on the slides here in our church. Um, that is one of the biggest problems you're going to find as a congregation ages. I hate to say that word about us. I'm sorry, I'm not looking forward to my next birthday. Uh, but it is a reality as we get to 55, 60, we start losing our ability to see levels of light. And so having higher contrast on church screens is a very important do. And I'm happy to see our church is addressing the issue. Thank you. And then Mike had an announcement. Yeah, you know, on Saturday, September the 10th, the Lions Club is sponsoring a circus down at the grade school. Uh, performances are at 2 and 4.30. Uh, you can get tickets at the arenas or the library or Rain Kellner. I have tickets, so okay. Wonderful. Do we have other announcements this morning? Jackson's got one. So last night we had the Relay for Life over at the school and I think we had a pretty good turnout. I'm not quite sure how much money we made, but I think we did, did make quite a bit of money. So thank you for anyone who came. Big thank you to Pastor Cameron and Pat who let us use Fellowship Hall for meetings over the summer. So. Yeah, I know when I looked yesterday before the event started, they had raised $8,600 um, and their goal was 10,000. So. Uh, my guess is that um, through their fundraising last night, they were able to meet their goal, but we'll know more uh, hopefully this week and be able to share some of that more specific information with you next week. But thank you all for, for your support for that as well. Are there other announcements? If not, let us begin, or let us say happy birthday first. Um, Ron Workman's birthday is the third, so we wish Ron a happy birthday this week. Now I invite us to our opening prayer. Holy and gracious Lord, we are so grateful for this time to gather together today to be in your presence and be in the presence of our, our friends and our family and, and our Christian brothers and sisters. We just ask that today you open our hearts to hear your words and hear the ways that you are moving and allow us to join joyfully in worship and worship your name. It is in your gracious name that we pray. Amen. I invite you now to rise as you are able, in body or spirit, to join in our opening song, O oh, Four Thousand Tongues to Sing.
let us continue um, to rise and sing our next song, Come Ye Sinners, Poor and Needy, number 340 in the hymnal. Please join me in the unison prayer. Through the ages, O oh God, you have called to us. You lead to hope and peace. Enter our hearts again today and lead us to your healing love that we might serve you joyfully in this world that you have loaned to us. Amen. We come now to our time of, of prayer for this community and all uh, of those that are affected or that we know of in our hearts. And so we want to lift up prayers for Relay for Life, and we just pray for um, the joy of a successful event and for the ability for this community to come and to put our, our resources, our time, our talents, and our thoughts around cancer research. And so we just continue to, to lift up the wonderful work that will be done through that relay. Do we have other prayer requests this morning? We have a joy. Uh, Leonard went to saw the cancer doctor on Friday, and the cancer is not in the bone, but in the mar marrow, and uh, it's 10% less than 10 percent so that's our joy wonderful what a joy that is we have other prayer requests this morning joys or concerns if not let us join together in prayer holy and gracious lord we are so 
honored to be here worshiping you and worshiping with one another. We have such a unique opportunity to join together with those around us and ask for your prayers. And lift up to you the prayers that are on our hearts, our minds, the prayers, the joys, and the concerns that, that give us life and that give us despair. We take a moment now to lift up to you, Lord, the, the people that are on our hearts this morning, those that, that we know of prayer requests for and those who just are on our hearts. Lord, we also lift up prayers for our community of Silver Lake and, and Topeka and just for your presence and, and guidance to be here. We ask for your prayers to be with our country and this world and with all of the leaders. And we ask, of course, for your prayers and your presence to be with your holy church, both here and throughout the world, that we may continue to do your work and your will. We just ask that, that you give us a blessing today allowing us to see your, your light and your love in this world. And together we join our voices and pray the prayer that Christ taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I forgot a couple of prayers at the beginning. They were on a different sheet of paper than the one I was looking at. Um, so one, uh, uh, Kathy is asking prayers for her uh, daughter-in-law's mother who is, has stage 3 Hodgkin's lymphoma and it's not looking super well. So we lift up um, prayers for her today. I also uh, want to thank you all for your prayers for Carissa. Um, she's feeling better uh, this week, and so she's back to church today. She's still a little tired, but she's feeling a lot better. So I thank you all for that. Um, and so we just lift these up to the Lord. Um, as I say, uh, Lord, in your mercy, please respond. Hear our prayers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Amen. Let us now hear our scripture reading this morning. Our scripture reading today comes from the book of Luke in the 14th chapter, verses 1 and 7 through 14. Please rise in body or spirit for the reading of the scripture. On one occasion, when Jesus was going to the church of a leader of the Pharisees to eat a meal on the Sabbath, they were watching him closely. When he noticed how the guests chose the places of honor, he told them a parable. When you are invited by someone to a wedding banquet. Do not sit down at the place of honor in case someone more distinguished than you has been invited by your host. And the host who invited both of you may come and say to you, give this person your place. And then in disgrace, you would, turn, you would start to take the lowest place. But when you are invited, go and sit down at the lowest place so that when your host comes, he may say to you, friend, move up higher then you will be honored in the presence of all who sit at the table with you. For all who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. He said also to the one who had invited him, When you give a luncheon or a dinner, do not invite your friends or your brothers and sisters or your relatives or rich neighbors, in case they in may invite you in return, and you would be repaid. But when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, and the blind, and you will be blessed because they cannot repay you, for you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. May God add a blessing and a reading and a hearing and understanding to God's word. Amen. I forgot to put that in, in the bulletin. That's why she didn't say that. So that's my fault. You may be seated. I want to invite now our children to go out for Sunday school. I don't know who our teacher is this morning, um, if we have one, um, but 
uh, do we have any kids that were wanting to go to Sunday school? That may also solve the problem there. Okay, um, that's all right. If not, if you would like, uh, the nursery is open if, if that would be better for you. So I got married about just over three years ago now. One of the things we had to figure out was seating. Some of this is easier to figure out than others. You have your head table with the bridal party. um, And given that we were the first of our friends to get married, it was pretty easy to figure out our bridal party. So we didn't have to worry about significant others or anything up there. It was strictly who was our bridal party was up at the table. And so that made that decision pretty easy. You know, then there's the order of the bridal party, which, you know, that's a little more thinking of who's going to be, uh, for me, the best man, who's going to be the groomsman, who's going to stand in, in what order. But then that usually translates to how they sit here. So once you get that figured out once, it kind of comes and matches up. And then... As, as you sit down, you usually sit with the best man and maid of honor closest to the couple and move outward from there. But then, then the questions are, what happens outside of this? Where do the rest of the guests sit? Guests sit. Where do the, the family sit? Where do the friends sit? Where do the other relatives sit? It's, it's a whole process. So there's kind of two ways that seating can be done at a wedding. There's reserved seating and open seating. So reserved seating, there's a lot more to think about with reserved seating. Um, You have to come up with place cards and you put or you just decide who's going to sit at what table. There's a lot to think about. Who should be at the same table? Who shouldn't be at the same table? Who do you think will want to sit with someone? Do you put all the single people at one table? What do you do with the kids? It's, It's a whole lot of questions and where should people be seating? Family? They're usually closer to the head table, so where do we put them and relative? And then how do we work out from our immediate families to your extended families and so on? And who gets to sit closest and who's going to be farther away? I went to a wedding earlier this summer where there was reserved tables. It wasn't a name plate on every space, but there was a, you were assigned a table number. So upon entry, uh, I found my name on the table list, and mine was table 12 of 12, which was fine. It was the table I was at was all people I had gone to college with. It was a college friend of mine who was getting married. It was no problem to me to be in the back corner at a table with my friends. I was there to to celebrate uh, my friend's uh, marriage, and so that's why I was there. But I'm sure that there were people who it mattered where they sat at that wedding. And then we have kind of the other way, open seating. So this is how we did our wedding, except for a few family tables we had reserved up front. So when you do this, it's just kind of first come, first serve. So this doesn't mean that everyone will get to sit where they want to sit. Everyone will get to sit as close or as far away as they would like. But everyone's going to get a seat, and they can choose who they sit by, who they don't sit by. And we don't have to make those decisions ourselves. Because ultimately, a wedding is about celebrating the union of two people and covenanting a relationship between God and the couple. And so we want to share this experience with those who we love, so we invite them. And so here's a picture of one of the things we did is as we started the the dance, we were able to get everyone or pretty much everyone out onto the dance floor and get a picture taken. So we also have a little memory of who was at our wedding. But this is who we invited. We did this to invite our friends and family to celebrate with us, to celebrate this joyous day. The parable that we heard from Jesus this morning is also about a wedding. And Jesus gives us two different sayings in this parable. He has one directed towards the guest in the parable and another saying directed towards the host. To the guests, Jesus says, be humble and take the last seat, as you will not be disgraced that way. But you can always move higher and be filled with joy when you are asked to move, rather than be disgraced. But why does sitting in a certain position matter? There are kind of two different things in the ancient time that made a, played a difference in this. 
At ancient meals, specifically at weddings, usually the, the more um, distinguished spot you had, the better food you had, the better drink you had. So the people closest to the bride and groom and their family would have the best food prepared for them, the best wine that was available, the best seating. And as you move farther away, the food would become a little less good and a little less good. The wine, a little less good and a little less good. And so not only was there just, you know, a reason of saying, well, I'd like to be closer to them. There's also the farther up I get, the better food I get. So there was a want to be. So being lower on, in the food, in, in the seating meant you had lower grade food and you weren't going to get the same things as the people at the head of the table. Then there's also a sense of superiority. If we are willing to place ourselves ahead of another person, we are saying that in some way, when we're, we're setting up on, on a range of from one side to another, that we have more than this other person, that we're able to place ourselves above this other person in seating in some way. And this is defeating the message that Jesus is asking of us. Jesus is saying to humble oneself to others, to put, to put others before yourself just as Jesus did. If we think to the Last Supper in John's Gospel, John brings up Jesus washing the disciples' feet. This act was that reserved for the lowest of the servants in the house. It was not an act that any of the family members would do or that the the servants who had been there a long time would do. It was the servants who were new, the servants who were the lowest of the servants. You're touching someone's dirty feet and getting them clean as they come in so that then they can have a party. It's not a glorious job. I know I don't necessarily want to every time go when someone comes into my house, wash their feet. I don't know where they've been. But that was what they did because, you know, they were walking around with, in sandals and dirt. And so feet were very dirty. But this idea of washing feet, Jesus taking his place of being God on earth, God incarnate, and coming down and taking the place of the lowliest of the servants is a true example of what Jesus is talking about in this passage. To not take the seat up at the top, but to take the lowest seat. To take the lowest seat at the table, put all others before yourself, and serve them. And Jesus did this in many other ways as, as he ate with the poor and the sick. He spent his time with not the righteous of society, but with the outcast. Due to his, his place of power, he, he gave that up so that those without it could have voice when they were voiceless. They could have a place at a table where no one had welcomed them before. In all of the things that Jesus did, Jesus placed himself before or after others and always placed others before himself. He ends this first part of the story with the whole meaning of what it is. In Luke 14, 11, he says, For all who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. This is the whole message that Jesus was trying to say in these first few verses here. When we exalt ourselves above, above others, we are placing ourselves above others because of something we've determined in our minds. And we lose sight of our common humanity and the fact that all of us are called very good in the eyes of God. But when we humble ourselves, we live out Jesus' calling to place ourselves last, to place others first, and to always be serving. Then after Jesus addressed the guest, he addressed the host. This story is much the same But now it's to the host of the party, 
Do not invite your friends, your brothers and sisters, your relatives, or your rich neighbors, for you may be repaid. But do invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind, for they cannot repay you. What Jesus is saying here is we are not to expect anything in return for the generosity of people coming to these events. You think again back to one of our, our modern weddings. Those you invite, you kind of expect that they're going to give you a gift. That they're going to come whether it's, it's $5 in a card or it's a brand new set of pots and pans. Somewhere, the person coming, there's a little bit of an expectation that um, they or most of them will get you a gift. Those in the wedding party, there's a little bit of expectation that, well, if they were in my wedding party, they'll invite me to be in their wedding party. While these may not be outright thoughts that we have, they're inside these, the, the kind of unspoken rules of a wedding. We are to buy a place for those who do not have a place, and that is what Jesus is telling us. To love others and bring about God's kingdom. It's not about interacting with those who are like us and those who we know well all the time. It's about opening our community to expand beyond our immediate circle and open it up to all of God's creation and all of God's children. To those who are often seen by, by us as outsiders or the people who we may turn our head away from as we see them on the street corner or as we see we drive by that house that doesn't look like it's in very good shape. It's about welcoming them in and expecting nothing in return. To have an event and to have places where as we invite people to come and stay, we're doing it out of the true goodness of a heart, out of our humbleness to give them a place to be, to have fellowship, to create friends, to have a meal, to worship, to do so many different things. Jesus is, is not telling us that we should never celebrate with our family and friends, but there are, there are places for that, and then there are places where we have to expand outside of that. If we get locked in within our circle, even if it's just the circle of our church, we will never grow. We will never be able to truly live out the calling that Jesus has for us. The calling to make disciples of all nations, of all people, of all races, of all genders. To, break in, to bring in people into this fellowship, into this Christian community, this Christian family of brother and sisterhood. If we stop at our community here, at our friends who sit to the left, to the right, to the front, behind us, we lose sight of bringing in the other people that God has also called very good. The other people who God has given his grace so freely to, who God loves, who we are to love. And so when we do this, we create a place at the table for those people. We give voice to the voiceless and we provide a place for the outcasts. So how can we invite the societal outcasts to our party? How can we make this place not only for our family and friends, but for those we wouldn't normally interact with? Jesus is not the leader of an exclusive club that only those on the list can get into. Jesus is the leader of a group open to all where everyone receives God, God's grace, and if we accept it or not, and all are children of God. So for us, we must humble ourselves to create space for those whose voices and presence have been rejected by our society. And we do that by living out what Jesus is calling us to do here, to humble ourselves, to place ourselves Last and all others before us. And to not only invite our friends and family, but to invite those who do not normally get an invitation. Amen. We continue now with our offering. And so do we have ushers this morning? 
Okay, we have, can I get two more people to help usher? One, two, three, there, okay, all right, everyone's ushering. <laughs> um, if we can get three or four people, that would be great. And then, um, so we have a now time to receive our offerings where we can continue to be a part of the ministry of God's kingdom here and now. Let us receive our tithes and offerings. Gracious and loving Lord, we lift up to you today these gifts, these gifts of our tithes and offerings for you to bless them, to consecrate them for your work, so that we may create a place where all are invited, family, friends, and outcast, the poor and the sick, all are invited to participate in your kingdom. Help us to do your work, and we just pray your blessing upon these gifts and upon us. It is in your holy, gracious, and loving name that we pray. Amen. I invite you now to rise as you are, or to continue standing as you are able, and join us in our closing song, um, Whatever I Picked. <laughs>
As we go forth today, allow us to be people of light and love in this world. Allow us to be people who go forth seeking to give voice to the voiceless in a place to those without one at our table. The service is ended. You may go in peace. Thanks be to